the top of the helium through there, and we need to find the trochanter. Anything on this line coming backwards, posterior fibers, does extension, external rotation, and abduction. So there's your trochanter, there's your helium. Anything coming back here, posterior mode. Anything through to the front, now the ASIS is there. So now we've got this area here, which will be tight. And you can palpate, you can feel tightness there. And a bit of weakness, a bit of tightness. Feel that tightness there? Okay. So what I'd like to do to warm up is to, you know like a cat pads its bed before it kind of settles down. <laughs> so what I like to do is rock either side of the decanter. If I push down on the femur, the glute med min is tightened. And then if I push above the decanter into the ilium and release on the femur, I'm just tightening and pushing into the glute. Sometimes I'll just push my elbow up towards the ilium, release and work the line up. This is my kind of warm up. It's quite a painful area. Quite nice to just add and work my way through like that. I could spend ages. That's why I don't get fatigued in the session. <laughs> Most people it's like an hour of adding. Most people are like these glutes, yeah. And so basically it's just getting in and then working down on these new lines there. Uh, <laughs> it's finally cracked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> Literally just lost the thread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all I've done there is I've warmed up. So there are trigger points going from the trochanter, one, two, three, in a line, all the way up, and they will hurt on most people. So you could find that midline, and then with my elbow, dig in, I've gone right above the trochanter, <coughs> and I'm dropping into that space. It'd be like a seven out of 10. Simple leading frictional compression still. We've got that, and we've got that kind of light padding. Come back in, go a little higher up, drop in, Quite sore again. What else is all feel like? Yeah. I saw a twinge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good pressure, hardly any effort. Coming right up to the top, glute med. We'll come off glute min now. There's a nice little line just there as well. So we've gone just up from the trochantic line all the way up. Then I might come around the back, just cuff around the trochanter, and then push up. Or weakness on this side. Come right up to the ilium. All good? Yeah. Yeah? So it's right that mid line. <coughs> so from the trochanter to the ilium, draw a line right over the top of the trochanter is one, midpoint two, <coughs> up at the top of the ilium, three. Three really good spots to release down. Compression work. Come around the back and do little moons. I tend to do, <coughs> what's it in your geography field trips where you throw your little grids out and you look at what's going on? Yeah, yeah. You want to kind of view the, the body as a little grid <laughs> and try and be methodical in the way that you do things. So that's my center line that I can palpate. I'm going to do little rainbows all the way around the back. Just make sure that I do each area because. You've got your trigger points, but there is, everyone is very individual. You can't just go trigger point, trigger point, trigger point. You've got to have an exploration or a rummage and see what you can find before you move on. But once you've done little rainbows this way, you then come back to the main trochantic line. You, sorry, just to be clear, you're not actually doing the little rainbows. You're doing it. That's my yeah. little yeah. rainbow. Yeah. But you're not doing it like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's nice. It's not very rich, is it? <laughs> <laughs> rainbows. <laughs> And we were having a look, and I'm watching his face. He might go the other way, but there's nothing really presenting, and I can't really feel anything. Is that horrorsome? Okay. So now we're coming into the front glute heel here. And if you were to bring your knees into ever so slightly more flexion, let's move this out of the way now because this is going to be a hindrance. Into flexion. There we go. Good. Clam. Clams, don't talk about clams, clams. External rotation is a clam. So when you do a clam, you keep your feet together, lift the knee up for me, there fires up. 
Yeah. So that is working for an external rotation. It shouldn't really be doing it. It should be here. And so release. Go again. Yeah. You feel, feel this is going strong. Yeah. This is not doing very much at all. We need to change that movement pattern so that this is working. And this isn't. So back down again. How do you do that? Are you doing that at the moment? Go again. Mm, starting to move. Not really. We're going in there. It's by time and frequency. It's going to gradually move you into move, kind of releasing from here. We need to. Get, the clams are a tricky one. I think I would start with standing mead activation, which is sassy hip straight. Like that. <laughs> like that. Move there to be strengthening glute mead. Nicely. That's a really nice one. It's easier, it's easier to, to do, I think, and relate. This one, if you get somebody doing clams for some rehab, then essentially they will roll their hips back and just activate glutes, mid anterior, and min anterior, and probably TFL. It's such a difficult one. You might find if you lift that knee up for me, hips roll back. You have to constantly kind of keep correct people, stick the tummies out, all sorts of issues going on with clams. So I quite like glute bridge raises and the standing one as a kind of changeover of those. Do regularly, re 